Hello and welcome to Old World. My name is Clough and today we're going to be playing this new re newly released game uh, from the Epic Store. And this comes from Mohawk Games as you can see down here in the right and it comes from the lead designer of Civ 4 which is possibly one of the best civs that they've uh, ever come out with. So um, I am looking forward to making a few videos on this one because uh, I do want to make a few videos and uh, it just seems like a, an absolute perfect candidate for me to do that with. So I am kind of looking forward to this one. Now, um, today um, we are going to go in and play as one of the uh, starting nations here. So we have Rome, Persia, Greece, Egypt, Carthage, Babylon and Assyria. I have played about roughly 10 hours of gameplay um, and I've watched a few other people's content on this game and I, I think I sort of understand, um, well definitely more than when I started of course, but uh, I still, I think I do sort of understand a bit better what I have to do and sort of how the game works in general and things like that. So uh, first of all we've obviously got to decide on what uh, nation to play as. Uh, the leader doesn't matter as much because uh, the difference between this and Civ is that you don't have a leader for the entire game. They um, borrow sort of um, sections sort of from from Crusader Kings 2 if you've ever, ever played that game where you have heirs and there's a line of succession so you do have to worry about grooming a suitable heir and um, things like that so uh, mainly, um, sort of the difference between the starting the nations is sort of the starting text, which does have a massive impact on what you can do early on. Because technology in this game, I found, does seem to take longer, and you do need to, you know, make a more thoughtful decision on, you know, what you're going to go for, um, because you may need something obviously more pressing than something else and you can't really afford to wait for the amount of time taken to research that first thing before you go for the second thing so it is definitely a, a, a thoughtful game that you have to sort of be aware of what you're doing and what you're going for so um so rome would give us 100 percent xp for all units during combat plus one fatigue limit and all cities will produce more training limits which is what that symbol means there which is sort of the um currency for military and things like that within the game which i'll explain more in a little while now um the plus one fatigue limit is really useful again i'll explain that in just a moment so rome might be something to go for plus 50 percent harvest production i assume that mean oh okay that is just from harvesting a resource so you can go over um similar to how you can in save you can go over sort of resources this time with a scout in this game and harvest the resource now unlike in save it doesn't actually get rid of it but um you just receive a small amount of resources from harvesting that now personally i don't think that's that amazing like uh, it's not too bad but y you would have to really focus on sort of harvesting things whenever you possibly can to take advantage of that and to be honest I still am unaware if harvesting resources actually has a negative effect if you are, you know, currently, you know, you have an improvement on that resource and you're working at it. I don't know if that would reduce its production, but it's always something to think about. So for Greece, we have the Olympics, which is a project. It's sort of like something you can do in your city to increase its output. So Olympics, I believe, gives you um, training time again, similar to the Romans, but you can obviously stack that because you will be able to run that project a number of times. We also get plus four um, culture, that is, per year, and minus 25% cost for settlers. That could be pretty big. Egypt over here, we um, we have 400 stone to begin with, which is a huge increase early on, and potentially could get us a quick early wonder. We also get plus 50% from farm on river, plus 50% from, from, from quarry on river, I guess replicating the bounties of the Nile, so that's pretty dope. And then we have Carthage over here, Dido, so we get 100 for founding a new city, that is science. We also get plus 50% money uh, in our cities, which is, again, very good um plus two uh per year on for all cities for babylon here with nebuchadnezzar we have plus 20 percent growth uh we have treasury which gives us plus which normally would uh, you know just give us 10 um gold per turn 
minus two food per turn. That's sort of the trade-off for it. It's like a project in a city, similar to what I was explaining about the Olympics. Um, but instead of just giving us that, it would also give us plus two um, to the uh, culture, which allows us to develop new buildings. So that could be really useful. And we have a Siri here, which, uh, again, this is an early access game. It, it has only just been released. It is in point one something or other, so it's very early access. Even though it does feel like a very complete game, more so than some games that are in 1.0. So it's quite refreshing in that regard. But for a Siri, we get um, plus two orders, which is a major currency within the game, which, again, I'll explain in a moment. And all new units start with focus one, which gives us uh, more crit chance, which is actually really good. Um, I think I might go for the Greeks. I feel like they are um, just a nice little unit to go for, nice little sieve to go for, and um, the bonuses aren't too shabby either now. I am playing on the good for now because I don't fully understand the, um, you know, the game yet. So I'm assuming the noble is sort of, you know, the normal difficulty, considering it's um, sort of in the middle of all the others. Um, so... That's why I've decided to go for the good this time, just because I, I don't think I could succeed uh, very well on any larger difficulties. Now I'm going to go for medium map size, and I'm going to go for seaside map script, because these are the um, sort of... Oh, I didn't know this was even a thing. This is totally new to me. Cool. Anyway. Um, this is sort of the map seed, and I... Uh, I'm going to leave it awful on default for time for the time being. You can also go on advanced setup and change these to have sort of a custom difficulty if that's what you wish. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start the game because I've been rambling for almost seven minutes now and we haven't even seen any gameplay. So um, let's go ahead and start this up. Now again, this is a very new game so there may be bugs um, within this. Um, so I do apologise if they do crop up, but so far I've only encountered a few and they haven't necessarily been game-breaking, they've just been maybe a little annoying here and there, but nothing major. Now, first of all, I just need to go in and turn off the tutorials because I've pretty much read most of the tutorials that pop up. I just need to... Um, just need to go in and turn that off because I don't believe I'll need that any longer. But... Where was it? That is the question. Where was the tutorials? Please show me where you are. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with it for now. I think it tells you when it first pops up. So, we've got the first city here. and We can found it with a family. Now, the family you found it with will have, um, you know, significant effects on, you know, the output of the city. So, for example, you can see here that if we found it with this um, with this family here, the Argead, um, I'm going to butcher all the pronunciations, but that would give us plus two more training limits or training currency. Um, the city would always be connected to the capital, so you wouldn't need to be on a river or connected by a road. It would just be connected, which would minus the maintenance, as you can see there, and plus the growth. Um... All mounted units in this capital would start with Saddleborn, um, and the family seat can build units that require horse, camel, elephant, without having these resources. So that's always useful. We would also gain an extra scout. Um, this guy, this time we would gain an extra worker. We'd get more culture, lumber, mills, and mines would output more. And all new siege ships, siege ship units start with ingenuity as well. We would gain a worker and one year to build urban improvements, uh, so we would get a bonus to that. Minus one year to build an urban improvement, sorry. So we would get more civic, we would get more culture, we would get more orders on a cultural event. And we can hurry production with money and we would gain a cultural level from founding it with these guys. With the uh, Alchemaeanid, we would gain more orders per year, we would also gain more civic per family opinion level. Which uh, I assume there's, I don't actually know that yet, but I assume there's thresholds. Um, where families, because I, I know they go from, for example, being, um, you know, pleased, upset, things like that. So I imagine each one of those levels would give you plus one per um, their opinion level. I don't quite know what the thresholds are yet. I know they um, obviously do eventually become upset or cautious or this, that and the other. I just don't know what the exact, um, you know, I don't know what the exact numbers are yet. So this would give us plus 400 on the seat founding as well uh, of Civic, which would mean that we can pretty much 
institute a law straight away and we would almost have enough for a second law. Now, I think I'm going to go for the um, Sipsilid, however you would say that. And found this sit here, so you can disable tutorial events by unchecking tutorial in options. <laughs> Okay, let's try and find that one more time. So, tutorial in options. Where are you? Ah, off. I can't believe I just went straight past that before, but oh well. Here we go. So, we've got a worker. I, first of all, think it will probably be a great idea to get a stone cutter because we could go for an early wonder if we were to put a stone cutter there. We also have the ability to get a luxury resource here. That would be more culture and more gold. Now, I think I'm just going to go for the marble first, just for the extra civic. And then I'm going to go for the dyes over here, which would provide us with more culture and money. So let's go for that to begin with. Three years, not too bad because of that reduction in urban... Oh no, that's not an urban building, so that doesn't matter. So that would have cost three anyway. I'm wrong. So uh, I'm going to go over here to the goody hut, just like in Civ. There's like tribes that you can find. Hmm... Now, we could gain two more scouts, which would be quite valuable this early. Or we could gain plus 75 to research, which, again, could be really good. But I think I'm going to go for the extra scouts because we could secure city sites. We could find goody huts. We could explore the terrain and gain advantages over our enemies by uh, gaining these guys. So I'm going to get them here. And we only have a limited amount of orders, so we're not going to be able to move all of them. Uh, this turn. I think I'm just going to move the one and um, get him to obviously go ahead and explore. Now, first of all, let's get this worker to build the nets here. There we go. So, you, let's go over here. That will cost two orders. Oh, yeah, and to explain, we have orders down here, and you can, you, your units have these pips above them, which is their fatigue sort of limit. It's how many times they can move each turn or perform an action each turn so if you notice they have three movement base movement they can move three times on this flat land here obviously terrain does modify that but i could do that for one order i could move three more um over here which would be two orders three all the way up to the amount i have on here now you can move them past your uh, fatigue limit but it would cost you 50 training rate so if you have leftover orders but they are fatigued you still can move them but it costs double the orders and the um fatigue limit would kick in um and sorry the the training limit would be required the training cost sorry would require to be spent um so you've got to think about if that is a thing that you want to do now let us have a look what's around us so that would trapping would give us access to those elephants which would not be a bad thing at all. I think I might actually go for that to begin with. Just to start us off there. And I'm going to end the turn. Okay, so we, as you can see up here, we do already have an heir. Prince Alexander. Makes sense, since I'm King Philip. So, um, time passes quickly. You still remember the birth of Prince Alexander, but he was growing up fast and eager to learn. Would you like to educate Prince Alexander? Of course I've got to give him a military education. Can't have Alexander the Great and not give him a military education. So, uh, let's just do that to begin with. Let's move our scout here four times. Just to... Oh, okay. So, we've met a tribe here. So, these are like um, city-states in a way. Um, from Civ, they're like, but with multiple cities, they they are like a, a mix between city states and barbarians, because there are barbarians in this game, which are like disorganized people. These are like organized people, but not quite on the level of a civilization. And then you have obviously your fully fledged uh, classical nations. So um, we could send soldiers. We would gain a warrior. They wouldn't like us very much. We can't choose that one. I think it's because we don't have enough gold. We would gain XP. Now, the the early warrior to me for forty um, metal, which is cheaper than a ba that it would cost to produce it from a city, and obviously we would get it straight away. I think that's really useful. So I'm definitely going to um, get a warrior. I'm going to move my guy onto here, and I am going to harvest that all like I was on about earlier with the nation special ability. I'm going to harvest it for six 
um, metal over here. So that is now harvested. As you can see, it doesn't go away. It just gives me that six metal. Uh, but this is a city state. Uh, this is a city location, sorry, and it's protected by the Gauls over here. So I'm probably going to go to war with them because they're quite close and I want that piece of land. Now, there's another city site over here. Right, so get my guy to go up there. One more movement, and we've got another goody hut. So, our explorers find a family of starving law keepers encamped in the ruins, surviving on scraps. Pleading for help, they offer to share their mastery of oratory in exchange for food. Will you agree to that offer? So, we would gain a technology which, for 100 food, is very useful. I'm definitely going for that. Um, now, let's move our other scout. I'm going to spend three orders to get him over here. Spend a fourth to get him over here, and I'm now known as the Explorer, and that's because I've explored three runes, so that's always good. So, scavenging through the runes, we found a significant amount of stone, iron, and wood. However, local raiders could reach the runes by nightfall. We can't fight them off, but we can carry some of the loot back home. Which of the three would you like us to bring? I'm going to say the stone because, again, like we, we we may potentially be able to get an early wonder if we uh, if we do that now. I'm going to move you just to explore a little bit more and then I'm going to move, I can't move him too much but I may as well move him just to get him closer next turn to having the, uh, to you know being able to explore things. Oh, they attacked me because they must be ranged. Ooh. Are you, ah. Oh. No. We've heard reports that Prince Alexander struggles with, the t with his tactics training. Perhaps we should explore educating him in philosophy instead. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Right, okay. I'm going to sell a bit of wood. That gives us enough money, so there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely keep him on tactics because that just feels thematically correct, and uh, go from there. So let's keep moving along the coast, move up onto this hill so we can see a little bit more. Keep moving, and finally this would end the turn. Now you, I'm gonna move on to you. I'm gonna move you across here. Move you up there, and one more. Exploring quite a bit, which is always a good thing. Going to move you and get rid of this fog of war. Maybe explore there. Nice new city site. Um, and we don't really have many orders to play with yet, so we're not able to quite fully utilize these scouts, but it doesn't really matter too much. Now, we aren't going to be able to use the scouts quite as much this turn either, because... Obviously, we're going to be uh, spending these actions with our workers now. I'm going to um, use him to build a net here. Because it's always good to go and get resources that are around on the map. Um, sort of, you know, all built and everything like that. To take advantage of the uh, extra resources you get from just, you know, building um, sort of improvements on standard tiles. So it's always good to sort of get all those filled in um, as a priority. Now, I'm going to move my guy over here to get this explored there we go moving along now I am actually going to get my soldier to move a little bit across because I want him to move across the city site to block any other nation from putting their settler there and exploring that so also it looks like there's a little path down here so I'm kind of tempted to take this soldier and move him down here but we'll see so we have another settler, so that's what the first city does start off making, so that is now done. And I'm going to immediately just get him to go over here and build this city. Now as you can see, it's slightly outside the four movements which you can do for orders. So what I'm going to do is I am going to spend um, 50 training and the six orders because it costs double the orders every move over the, over the um, movement limit. So it's just going to cost quite a number of orders, but I want this city done this turn if possible. So I'm going to spend that and move him there. Now we do get a, as you can see, excuse me, we do get a uh, negative to legitimacy, which is this down here, which improves uh, family opinion and various other things. Um, so I definitely don't want to skip out on that. I don't think it's worth it. Now this would gain us... Mines and lumber mills. No, I don't really think this city would benefit from that too much. Plus two per year wouldn't be too bad. It's always connected if we get that one. I think I'm actually going to go for the uh, Alcmanid. 
um, and build Sparta, which is always dope. Can't go wrong with that. Um, so now we have only a few orders left. I am actually going to send him over here just to, to get this explored, just to make sure there's no connected land. And let's get our other guy over here to uh, set him on Sparta now. Choose our production. And let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a forum first to improve the um, to improve the civic here so that we get the ability to build these quicker because civic also you can you can you have your citizens down here and you can build specialties but as you can see it costs quite a lot and it does cost civic so if we can get that going we can uh, specialize our citizens to work these improvements and um, that will you know increase the output so i definitely want an early forum on the go just to get that building that little bit quicker now what i am going to do is i am going to get a settler 12 turns that is a lot so wait actually let me double check how many turns seven i am actually not going to do that i'm going to build a second settler which is going to stump the growth a little bit of Athens, but it's going to give me the ability to expand to that city there quicker, which is, uh, in my opinion, a priority that I'm going to want to do. So, let's uh, march on. Ooh. You hardly recognize the young man who returns from training. Prince Alexander has spent the last several years studying to become a useful member of the court, and now he is ready to serve. We should celebrate the occasion. Hold the military parade and training exercise. So, I would gain XP. Prince Alexander would gain discipline. I think I'm going to do that. Gain okay, Alexander some discipline. Now for three years, two hundred stone. Again, that could be the that uh, literally there is um, wonders for that amount. So it would slow us down on this research a little bit, but I am going to go for that because I think you lose those if you don't actually go for them. And um, two hundred stone for essentially a bit of research is not bad at all. So um, I think I'm going to go for. I think I'm going to go for exploration so that my scouts can move on water. And uh, because by the looks of it, the southern coast, um, you never know, maybe there's, so maybe there's something to the south. So I guess we'll see. So I'm going to control um, four uh, cities for my first ambition. Now your ambitions are up here. This is sort of one of the ways that you um, sort of go ahead and win. You either complete ten ambitions or you reach the score limit here, which you get from cities, legendary cities and wonders. So that's sort of how you go for sort of a more... Um, peaceful sort of victory, I guess. Now, um, you do have these screens here, which I haven't really showed off yet. So, as you can see, we, we have King Philip and Queen Consort Olympias. Um, and we have Alexander here at the moment. Now, um, I haven't really actually looked at these buttons before, if I'm honest. So, we could um, go ahead and get him married off to one of the families. Um, that probably would be a good thing because we would then have him producing heirs, which we could use to fill out our court and, um, you know, things like that. So it might be useful to get him married off sooner, but for now, I'm just going to leave it. We have sort of a um, tactical view here, and we also have um, a sort of uh, Wikipedia style articles page for looking into what certain things do. But for now, I think we're just going to uh, carry on with how we are. So, looking at that map that I was just on, there doesn't seem to be too much to the north. Um, so, it's probably a good idea to get this explored. And maybe we can settle in that direction. And um, we, we would only need to sort of worry about one front. So, just getting all this fog of war cleared. Now, if you've noticed, we do gain a bit of resources as well, like there. When we do first discover, um, you know, um, resources on the map. So it's always a good thing to sort of be exploring as much as you possibly can. That's the edge of the map there. So we could literally use this to um, make it so that we only need to worry about one front and focus on military in that direction. So I'm quite happy with that. Um... But there is a lot of barbarians that are obviously covering this at the moment, making it difficult now. Getting another warrior. Ooh. 
Workers in one of the capital quarries have excavated the bones of a gargantuan beast. Some have become calling the creature a dragon, and they claim it once walked the earth. Send soldiers to protect the site from dragons. So, yeah, I I'm going to go for that one. Because, uh, again, like, it it's obviously we're spending resources, but at the same time, it it's essentially doing it without having to wait for the, the soldier to build. So, I'm going to do that definitely. And first of all, I'm going to go ahead and um, give you focus. That costs us 100 training time. I'm going to go ahead and promote you because you only cost 40 because you do have a little bit of XP. I'm going to promote you to focus as well. And you, again, focus because uh, the crit chance plus 10% for the first level is extremely good. And also, um, you know, I have the training rate to spare, so why not make my troops better? Um, now, you go over there and build a camp. And I would like my... Hmm, what can I do with my second worker here? It's probably best to um, go ahead and get a farm built over here. So I'm going to move him all the way over there. Now let's get this fog of war cleared. Luckily I'm not at war with the Gauls yet, so they're not going to attack me. Ooh. A marriage proposal has arrived from the Cispelid family, if that's how you say it. <laughs> so let's have a look what we have. So we would gain 10% opinion, which would, uh, which does have effects. Like, for example, if you look here, um, that is their current um, thingy to us. But the effects are, for example, um, units belonging to that family fight better. And cities belonging to that family output more. So it's always good to try and keep the families on your good side as much as you possibly can. Now I'm going to go for Xanthip. Because she is a builder and she is a herder which would improve pastures and camps in the city that we put her in a governor over. So, and we would gain more iron. So I'm definitely going to um, select her. Mathematical breakthrough. So we would gain a great scientist. I'm actually, instead of going for the great scientist, going to go for the straight up um, science here. So mathematicians from Athens come before you, uh, come before the court, sorry, to present a recent breakthrough. They suspect that this important work may have many valuable applications. So let's um, continue their research. And that increase, that does finish that research, but also it only costs us one year to go for the next one because it sort of overloaded the research as you can see there we've got 155 out of 120 or 155 out of 80 here so i'm going to go for the shrine improvements first of all and um get those on the go so let's get the farm built here get the uh, extra growth in sparta let's move along this coastline here Let's uh, move you, get some more of this, let's harvest this gold, because why not? I think I'm going to move you to get rid of this sliver of um, fog of war, because it's kind of annoying me a little bit. Let's move you that way, just to get rid of that fog of war, move you back down here. And we're out of orders, so there's got to be a way, it's probably here through the Pindus Mountains, but as far as I can tell, there's, oh yeah, I can go over water now, I forgot. And here we go. So we're not too far off the next one. So again, I'm going to go for roads because Sparta's not connected and it would benefit greatly from being connected to the capital, not only for unit speed, but those those sort of bonuses and benefits that we saw earlier. Oh, we've met Assyria. So they would be happy with me. I, give, I would get food, but we would lose legitimacy. They would be unhappy with me. We would gain legitimacy. We would gain even more orders, um, but we would be at war. And I would, I would gain steadfast as a general. So, I'm going to, first of all, just go and piss them off a little bit, but get the legitimacy. So, I'm, I'm not too bothered about that. So, they do have a city here. Um, mm, I was sort of hoping to have this little mountainous sort of section to myself, but I guess that was wishful, wishful thinking. So, um, let's go ahead and move him this way. There we go, getting that fog of war all sorted. Harvest this while we're here. Get some more of that glod. Yes, there is a there's a way through here. So that is grand. We can go through there. 
And yes, I'll go for the Olympiad just to... Because again, if I'm going th truly thematic, then Sparta is going to be my military center. So let's go for that then. Um, and why not a second Olympiad once it's done? Just stack that Olympiad on there. Oh, my wife has given birth to a daughter, Laodis. Which I hopefully can train her to do something useful for me later on. So we can build shrines here in Athens now that we have those unlocked from the tech. Now we can only have one each per nation unless we get a um, law later on that will allow us to build more. So for now it's probably best to... Hmm, quarries would produce more, blah, produce more. And I do have two here and potentially more because of the mountains over there which do increase the output of quarries. So it is probably a good idea to get the shrine of uh, Hades. So let's do that. Now, let's get my main man scout over here, move across. So we know the extent of their territory. You come down here and you start exploring upwards maybe. And there we are, out of turns, out of orders. Let's next turn. So, I'm going to go for a um, a treasury, I believe. Or the, the administration here for the treasury and granary. So, we have been running for about 31 minutes now. So, I am going to um, bring this episode to an end at this uh, the end of this turn. Because I think that would be a nice place to uh, leave it. So, uh, we've got another settler here. And I'm going to... I think I'm going to build, try and go after this barbarian camp here. Because... Um, I don't particularly want, um, I want to sort of ex expand in that direction to try and cut Assyria off. And so, um, it, I have more options moving forward so that they can't sort of expand beyond me. Um, now let's sort of start getting our warriors to move in that direction. Um, I'm going to add myself to this unit here because you can't move once that's been done and they're already sort of halfway there. So, um, let's go for Forum to begin with in Athens, because uh, I'm not going to go for another one of these units, because they do, again, cost growth, so the town will be growing while that's going on. Now, let's, again, go around these Assyrians, just to, so they do, like, I, I don't know how they do it so quickly, but look, they've already got a third city, even. Unless, no, that, that is three cities, that is kind of insane. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to deal with that. I'm sure we'll be fine. So, that does bring us to the end of this episode. I hope you guys um, enjoyed it, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Now, I am still learning this, so please leave any um, advice or, you know, anything like that in the comments, and I'll be reading those. Also, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a like, uh, and if you want to see more, then please subscribe. I, um, like I said before, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.